Speaker, my question is to the Acting Premier. I have an email from a mother of a young boy named Conrad. Conrad has autism and attends Yes I Can Nursery School. Let me share what his mother had to say. Yes I Can has been life changing. We don't say this lightly. It has changed the lives of us, Conrad's parents, and it's changed the lives of his sisters. And most importantly, it has had an enormous impact on the life of Conrad. Mr. Speaker, can the Liberals please explain to Conrad and his family why Yes I Can will be forced to close their doors? To the Associate Minister of Education. Associate, sure. Associate Minister of Education. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member opposite for the question. Absolutely, our government wants to give our kids the best start in life. Here, here. That's why we are making sure that we're moving more than a billion dollars towards childcare in this province wow. on a yearly basis. A in addition to that, we are now transforming the way we deliver childcare, and what we are doing is uh, moving our capacity to 100,000 new licensed spaces over the next five years. Thank you. When it comes to Yes I Can daycare and uh, ensuring that our children there get the best start in life, I want the member opposite to know that we are actually providing the City of Toronto $351.7 million in order to ensure that the childcare spaces and centres in the city are taken care of. 300000 of that is being moved forward to Yes I Can childcare. In addition to that, there was one yes, time transitional funding that we moved forward to the centre. That funding was one-time transitional funding. Thank you. And thank you very much. Supplementary. Your transformation is leading to a closing of the doors of Yes I Can, which has been doing exceptional work in the City of Toronto. Back to the Acting Premier. The Liberals keep telling us Yes I Can can talk to the City, but it won't do any good. There is no mechanism for the City of Toronto to provide Minister of Housing. funds. In fact, a director of the city's Children's Services branch wrote exactly that to the school. Quote, there is no operating funds available to your agency outside of the current mechanism. I repeat, no operating funds. Uh, Mr. Speaker, will the Liberals stop passing the buck and give Yes I Can the sustainable funding she promised nine years ago? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, $351.7 million going to the City of Toronto to ensure that the child care spaces and centres in the city are getting the support they need, I think, is a lot of money. In addition to that, as I mentioned earlier, 300,000 is being moved forward. And in addition to that, in addition to that, this particular center got one-time transitional funding of uh, $150,000. Actually, it was moved forward more than once. It was one-time transitional funding, in the end totaling $450,000. $450,000 that was only supposed to be one-time transitional funding to enable them and ensure that they were coming up with a plan that they needed in order to be able to uh, take care of a financial, sustainable financial plan. But let me just tell you about our, transition, our, our transforming of childcare. That is going to be starting off to, from 2017 and over the next five years. Thank you. We are working on that plan. And the Minister of Children and Youth Services just chirped, These are a this is a private operator. Is that really the issue? Is the problem that they are a private child care operator instead of a public one? That's wrong. To the chair, please. To the chair, please. Back to the Acting Premier. I want to share more of what Conrad's mom had to say. She asked that we, quote, imagine the immense feeling of relief we as parents feel knowing our son with special needs is being taken care of as if he is a member of the school's family. She asked you to try and visualize the look of joy in Conrad's sister's eyes as they heard him say his first word, sing his first song, and best of all, play with them. Conrad's mom added, this school has changed all of our lives and we cannot Question. imagine life without it. Mr. Speaker, will the acting premier tell Conrad and Conrad's mom Dad and sisters, why Conrad won't Thank be you. able to attend the school any longer. Thank you. You see the please? You see the please? 
And I would also appreciate the conversations that are going on between uh, caucuses while the question is being put not to take place. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I really look forward to the opportunity to talk about what we're doing in childcare because I really think that this is a historic initiative and it really shows the vision. Stop the clock, please. I will ask the same. Uh, I will make the same comment as I just made for another group of people. The conversations will stop here. I don't need the mem mem member from Trinity Spadina to armchair quarterback. I, I'm not impressed. Answer, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and that's why we have committed to transforming the way we deliver childcare in this province. We understand that that's a conversation that can't go one way. It has to happen with a number of the uh, stakeholders out there and parents and people who are actually informed about what our childcare system needs in this province. So we are getting ready to have consultations across the province and have those conversations to find out where we should be looking and concentrating our efforts. I want you to know that when we came into uh, government in 2003, the party opposite had actually supplied parents in this province with 10 per cent of uh, the spaces that children needed Shame. when it came to childcare. We immediately Answer. moved forward to double that capacity, and now we're moving forward to double that to 40 per cent.